Today in crypto. Since hitting an all time high at $4,870 on November 10, Ether, EDH, price has been posting lower lows over the past 50 days. If this downtrend continues, the lower trend line support suggests that the altcoin will bottom at $3,600. Still, Derivatives data is signaling that pro traders are not concerned about the seemingly bearish market structure. Notice how the price peaks are getting lower on the 12 hour time frame as mounting regulatory concerns drive investors away from the sector. In a press conference on December 17, Russia's central bank governor, Elvira Nebialina, stated that banning crypto in the country is quite doable. Continue reading on Cointelegraph. Bullish traders that drank the Bitcoin to $100,000 by year-end Kool-Aid are now coming to terms with the fact that there may be no Santa Claus rally to wrap up 2021. At the moment, the pipe dream has morphed into simple hopes that the top cryptocurrency can at least finish the year above $50,000. Data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and Trading View shows that the balance in price seen in BTC following remarks from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell has pretty much evaporated and over the past 48 hours the price has swept fresh lows at $45,500 and from the look of things. The price could drop even further. Continue reading on Coin Telegraph. Decentralized exchanges (DEX) have had an interesting year in 2021. As the year is on its last lap, it has never made more sense to look at how these exchanges have done. The growth in 2021 alone has been tremendous and has propelled a lot of these decentralized exchanges into the limelight. Despite the growth that they have experienced. It has not always been rosy for decentralized exchanges throughout the year. Like the rest of the crypto market, they have also experienced their own share of ups and downs. The volatility that plagues the crypto space has spilled onto decentralized exchanges and has no doubt been a defining factor in their growth. Related reading, Solana, Tron lead altcoins as digital asset inflows drop trading on decentralized exchanges surged in 2021 alone. Compared to 2020, Aggregated trading on decentralized exchanges was much higher in 2021. It follows the growth of decentralized finance (DeFi) that saw major accelerated growth in the same year. As more users flocked to take advantage of DeFi, decentralized exchanges were positioned to gain the most from this movie. The growth has however not been all smooth through this time. While much growth was recorded for the year, it was also a highly volatile time for the exchanges. Trading volumes have fluctuated greatly from low to high in various months. One example of this has been the growth recorded in the first five months of the year. Monthly trading volumes had grown from $62 billion in January to $163 billion in May. This growth also translated to centralized exchanges which also recorded record-breaking trading volumes. But then going forward, Trading volumes had fallen, showing mostly volatile growth. Related reading, U.S. Big banks to use blockchain for interbank FX settlements The year is almost at its end and aggregate numbers are coming in for the year. Decentralized exchanges have continued to do well after plummeting from May highs. By July, monthly trading volumes had plummeted from $163 billion to $56 billion. Trading volumes have since climbed back up to $107 billion in November. For December, trading volumes have been on the rise once again, suggesting that these exchanges may record higher volumes for the month. Both centralized and decentralized exchanges have also recorded similar trade movements which suggests that decentralized exchanges have now reached local saturation. As growth continues through the end of the year, the outlook for 2022 is positive from here on out, although trading volumes are still a long way from hitting the May highs. Data shows that Bitcoin has exceeded expectations as an inflation hedge as U.S. inflation rate rises to 6.8% per annum, as per the latest weekly report from it. As Bitcoin's price hasn't improved since the higher than expected CPI percentage was released, some have used this to argue against the coin being an inflation hedge. However, Arcane Research points out that as CPI measures inflation that has already taken place, the indicator is a lagging metric. And so, if BTC truly is an inflation hedge, the inflation should already be accounted for in its price by now. Related reading, by the numbers. 
An update on MicroStrategy's Bitcoin buying spree now. Here is a chart that shows how BTC's performance has compared with other inflation hedges since January 2020. The period since the start of 2020 was one of high inflation due to all the stimulus checks and supply chain issues. As you can see in the above graph, BTC gave a return of 520% in this time stretch, much more than gold's return of 8% and S&P 500's 33% gains. Related reading the biggest risk for Bitcoin. How quantum computers could hurt BTC The report concludes that this remarkable performance of BTC in such a period can only mean that the crypto is indeed a great inflation hedge. At the time of writing, Bitcoin's price floats around $49,000, down 1% in the last 7 days. Over the past 30 days, the crypto has lost 21% in value. The below chart shows the trend in the price of BTC over the last 5 days. Since the crash, Bitcoin has mostly moved sideways, and has showed no signs of recovery so far. At the moment, it's unclear when the price of the coin may escape from this range-bound environment, and which direction it might break out in. On-chain data shows that Bitcoin short-term holders have now started to realize significant losses. This could prove to be a bearish signal for the crypto. As pointed out by an analyst in the CryptoQuant post, the BTC market is now looking at significant losses being realized. This trend may be reminiscent of the May 2021 crash. The relevant indicator here is the spent output profit ratio, SOPR which is an on-chain metric. The super measure is the profit ratio of the overall market to check whether investors are, on an average, in profit or loss. The indicator works by looking at the price each coin on the chain was bought at and comparing it with the selling price. When the value of the super is above 1, it means coins during the period sold at a profit. On the other hand, values below 1 suggest holders were selling at a loss. Also, naturally, when the indicator's value is exactly equal to 1, the investors were, on average, breaking even for the specific time scale. A modified version of the metric is the short-term holder super, STH super, which shows the super for coins that were held for less than 155 days. Related reading, Twin Peaks, comparing the two 2021 Bitcoin tops now, here is a chart that highlights the trend in the Bitcoin STH super over the past few years. As you can see in the above graph, the STH super has decreased in value recently, and the metric is now below 1. This implies that these short-term holders have now started to realize their losses as the price of Bitcoin continues to decline. Related reading, Bitcoin, Ether spike after Fed announced no change to interest rates The analyst in the post thinks this trend may be similar to the scene in the aftermath of the May crash and so, the coin may continue to range sideways for a while, just like then before observing some uptrend. At the time of writing, Bitcoin's price floats around $49,000, down 0.5% in the last 7 days. Over the past 30 days, the crypto has lost 20% in value. The below chart shows the trend in the price of BTC over the last 5 days. Bitcoin has been in consolidation for a while now as the price shows no signs of recovery. At the moment, it's unclear when this sideways movement may end. But if the STH super is anything to go by, this trend may last a while longer, just like in May. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.